Oh, oh shit! Eight points of radiant damage. Woo! Roll the eight. Matthew Mercer, how do you want to do this? <laughs> oh, <yeah! laughs> Matthew Mercer, how do you want to do this? Matthew Mercer, how do you want to do this? Yeah. That's what it feels like! That's cool! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello everyone, Evan from Monkey DM here. So, Matt Mercer. Probably all heard of him through Critical Role, and it doesn't take a lot of watching time to understand that this man is an extremely good dungeon master. But we don't often see him in the shoes of a player. We were blessed the other day with Exandria Unlimited in which Matthew Mercer, accompanied by a few of his comrades, all are players in a campaign with Abria as the dungeon master. I can't pronounce her family name, so I'm not gonna try. And she does an amazing job at taking them through this world. Spoilers ahead, so if you haven't watched the first episode of Exandria Unlimited, go do so now and then come back to this video and then we'll talk. Or don't, I'm not your dad. If you like this video and make sure to subscribe, I can guarantee you that next Thursday, there's gonna be a new Exandria Unlimited episode. I have powerful connections. <laughs> it's been a very long time since we've seen Matt as a player, and oh boy, it's good. It's really good. I was not disappointed. Matt's character is basically a complete himbo. Super charismatic, but definitely not the smartest of the bunch. Thank you, Matt Mercer went for Frat Mercer this time around. All right, piss on my spear, shit in my beard. That's two pranks. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever else did this for me, let me know, because I'm going to get you back. It's going to happen. I'm just waiting for the day. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of y'all. She I, kind of startles back. And I yes, think that was my it. fault. Respect. I love pranks. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna have some times. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see his demeanor change from like a jovial to like plotting. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems that he's playing a cleric, right? I mean, the spells that he cast are bless, healing word, and so on. All right. Well, if you're if you're like a priest, do prove it. Do like a bless me, bless me. Very well. I my gums ahead. bleed a little bit because I didn't eat a lot of fruit. Go ahead and grab my holy symbol around my neck and uh, look to my left, dust my shoulder, look to my right, dust my shoulder, pick up the spear like a staff, Wow. give a glance, and I cast Bless on him. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yet on his character sheet, which I'm going to show here, it shows that he's a sorcerer. Interesting. Well, it's actually very obvious. He's playing a divine soul sorcerer from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. But it gets better. Our friend Matt describes his character as a dwarf and describes the fact that he's wearing chain armor. So given the fact that he has 15 AC and 14 dex, we can deduce that he is a mountain dwarf. Fun thing is that Mountain Dwarf get proficiency with medium armor. Meaning that Matt, with his build, basically shored up one of the biggest weaknesses that sorcerers and wizards have, and druids for that matter, which is their lack of AC. They get hit very easily, but Matt is walking around with a very decent AC for a full caster. And that's the advantage of being a Mountain Dwarf. Now, with the introduction of Tasha's Cauldron to everything, Mountain Dwarfs are now basically the best race for Spellcasters because you get plus four to any ability score of your choice, meaning that you get normally plus two strength and plus two con, but you can change them around with Tasha's rule and you can instead, for example, take plus two con and plus two charisma, which I think Matthew did, but I'm not sure. Which means that it makes for a very good spellcaster because on top of that, you can wear medium armor as well, which is absolutely amazing, especially considering that as a dwarf, your speed cannot be reduced by wearing armor. Fun fact is Matt is basically playing a cleric now because he's got the armor, the divine spells, <laughs> but no, he went the more complicated route with divine soul sorcerer. And I get him, it's an extremely good build. It's probably one of the best support builds out there. Just think about it. Sorcerers, 
have this insane ability called Twin Spell. Twin Spell, which work as the following. If you have a spell that can target a single creature, you can twin it so it targets two different creatures or twice the same creature. But it also works for healing spell. So your healing word, for example, for some sorcery points, you can twin it and cast it on two allies at once. Yeah, it's, it's really good. In addition, with Quicken Spell, which is another metamagic option that Matt has the option to take, he can turn spells which are normally an action to cast to bonus action spells. For example, the beautiful spell that is Spirit Guardians, one of the most broken cleric spells, sorcerers can cast that. Why not? I think another great spell that Matt could consider taking is Guiding Bolt, because once again, with Twin Spell, it's two enemies which will be marked for your allies to take advantage of. It's really good and it's quite some damage too. His build is also extremely good because Divine Soul Sorcerers get this ability called Favored by the Gods, which allow them, once per short rest, to add 2d4 to any roll that they make, turning a potential failure into a success, which is extremely good in case of bad rolls, which uh, Matt seems to have decided to do, case in point. Oh. Yes! <laughs> so this ability is most certainly gonna come in handy. And on top of that, with this build, Matt has access to one of the best spell lists possible, meaning that he gets all of the sorcerer spells and all of the cleric spells. One of the biggest weaknesses of sorcerers is that they don't know a lot of spells. They can't learn a lot. Their spell list is quite limited. But Divine Soul is one of the rare subclasses which fixes that weakness, and Matt took it. You can tell the dude probably played at least one or two games of D&D. Keep in mind, Divine Soul Sorcerer is probably one of the best support builds that you can get. It can also deal some insane damage output, although we haven't seen that in the game so far. I'm assuming that Matt will perhaps deal damage later on in the campaign, when we have eight episodes to go through. Or perhaps he will just stick as a support character. Time will tell. I'll give him that though. He had ways of optimizing his character further and clearly he chose roleplay over character build. Let me explain. His character is a himbo, as I mentioned earlier, which, I mean, Matt, it's, it's absolutely beautiful on you. I'll, I'll give you that. So his character is a bit of a dummy, but with a big smile and persuasive words. And he went for that, even in the stats. So he has a 9 in Wisdom, 8 in Intelligence, whereas a more optimized build would, ha would have shored up that Wisdom score and lowered the Strength score, for example. He also chose to have a Lance, for whatever reason, when it's really not optimal for the build. Why fight with a Lance when you can stay in range and shoot enemies from afar from a safe distance? Instead, he chose the more muscle approach where you go in melee and hit your enemies with a stick and because sorcerers have great constitution saving throws i'm sure he's not worried about concentration he also added some very unique backstory elements in his character usually when you think about a sorcerer you're going to take backgrounds which are more in line with charisma skills so for example entertainer which is going to give you some proficiencies in performance or persuasion, which is really good on a sorcerer since you have a good charisma. But instead, Matt chose, and I'm pretty sure on this one, it's not a 100% guarantee, but he mentions that he had something to do with thieves. And we see in the game that he's proficient with thieves tool. So I'm pretty sure his background is that of a criminal, which is very unique because that's not what you'd expect of a sorcerer especially a divine soul sorcerer which is more of a holy type man he instead goes for the more i don't want to say evil because his character is good but unusual approach to divinity let's say all in all this gives us a very unique character which is partly a criminal partly divine and partly a himbo it's not exactly a combination that you expect to see every day but i'm here for it and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen next. I, uh, I'm heavily snoring currently uh, before something catches in the sinuses and begins to 
toss awake, and you see, perched at the edge of a roof, <laughs> one arm dangling off the side, uh, a young male dwarf with kind of uh, wild, floppy, reddish uh, auburn hair with a, like a nice, somewhat unkept chin strap beard, um, wearing a vest over chain mail. Uh, one of his boots is off and kind of partially up the, um, up the roof behind him of the townhouse. Uh, he's a little bit of drool, just poking down his chin as he kind of... Um... How did... Nice. <laughs> <laughs> as he writes himself and kind of takes in whatever of his surroundings he can make sense of. From what we've seen so far, it seems quite clear that Matt is decided on playing a more support type character. Even in battle, he didn't choose to do many damaging spells, instead opting to support his allies, which makes sense given his subclass. But the interesting thing, and what I'm really curious to see, is that their party composition also has a bard and a druid, which are both amazing support classes. So I'm really curious to see how it goes, if they're just gonna keep helping on each other throughout. Although the bard seems to have a little, um, a little shadiness going on, I'm not sure. Amazing roleplay from him. It's it's fantastic to see him as a, as a player and his description skills are fantastic as always And if you pay attention and I think that's one of the things that he does which is amazing as a player Is that he stays in character so much throughout the whole game even when he's not talking. I mean just look at this I slept a little bit and then I woke up to the sound of monkey mister um, but yeah, I'm like so excited. I don't know why. I just can't stop. Like, I can't just get a good night's sleep. I just can't. I'm just so excited. Dariax? What? What are you looking at? Oh, no, I was just trying to think if I, if I had a... I don't know what I did last night, but I woke up on the roof and that was crazy and Opal peed on my spears. So like, it must have been fun, right? If you see there, he's admiring thing, making mimics and gestures, completely showing us the audience and his table that the character is totally there and it's not Matt they're facing, it's Dariax they are facing. And boy is Dariax glorious. Love that character so far, I'm not sure it's my favorite. Might make another video about the other members of the cast because I think they all did a fantastic job. Even the newer players were absolutely hilarious. I can't believe they spent about 30 minutes discussing about a pee competition, but hey, you know what? I'm here for it. Anyway, that was Evan from Monkey DM. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, watch another video of mine if you're interested. There's an ambulance coming. Anyway, have a good day.